Well, uh, thank you, David, and thank everyone for coming to my talk and the session. So uh, I'll present our work, Poop-Up. And um, Poop-Up is a wearable pneumatic shape proxy interface for grasping in VR. Poop-Up consists of several airbags, one on the palm that is capable of popping up to primitive shapes and flattening. For example, wearing a cylindrical airbag to emulate the haptic feedback of picking up a lightsaber or wearing a spherical airbag for the feedback of throwing away a virtual bomb. For haptic feedback in VR, many wearable devices were developed for fingertips to either emulate the forced feedback of firm grasping or the tactile feedback of contacting with the skin. They do not generate both of the sensations for the entire hand. To enable a more natural grasp, Real-world props that are similar to the virtual objects can be used as proxies for VR. Previous works demonstrates using a depth camera to scan everyday objects and map the appropriate ones to VR as passive proxies. Other researchers use small robots to dynamically assemble rough shapes serving as active proxies. However, the shape, number, and placements of these proxies depend on the given environment and they are less mobile and responsive when compared to wearables. Proxies have been shown to enhance the experiences in VR even if they do not perfectly match the virtual objects. Prior studies found that a mismatch of shape would significantly break the illusion where other properties can be largely altered. Other works have used weight illusion to create the sensation of virtual objects with different length. Inspired by prior works, we focus on the shape of the uh, grasping parts on virtual objects. Poolpub is mainly based on pneumatic interfaces, where previous works focus on shape changing through touch screens and tangible interactions. We developed new techniques to leverage pneumatic interfaces as active shape proxies for VR. So in this work, we propose the concept of a set of always available physical proxies for generating more natural grasping haptic feedback in VR. We present our prototype, pop-up prop on palm, a pneumatic shape proxy interface, one on the palm that pops up, that is, inflates using air pumps to appropriate shapes in response to the virtual object in VR, and then deflates to flat when the object is no longer in play. Pop-up provides the full sensations of grasping objects for the fingers as it is a physical object acting as a prop. Pop-up is always available for use within the entire VR interaction space because it is mounted on the palm. And pop-up is made of lightweight material making it easy to wear and take off. I'll talk about the design and implementation of Poop-Up. We designed the airbag folding structures for three primitive shapes and developed stacking and extension techniques to extend the applicability. The inflation and deflation of our two-channel airbags are controlled using air pumps, solenoid valves, and air pressure sensors. We use the maintenance air pumps to compensate for the air leakage for inflated airbag and also keep the deflated airbags at a low pressure to make them stay flat. We first decided the primitive shapes that can cover common scenarios of object manipulation in VR. We first looked into the taxonomy of human grasp. We found that for the main two grasping postures, power and precision grasp, there are cylindrical and spherical types for each category. Thus, we consider a sphere and a cylinder as essential shapes. To discover more primitive shapes, we look into objects in actual VR games. We watched 20 game trailers from Steam and labeled all the objects that appear being held in hand. We then categorized them by approximating objects to primitive shapes. For objects larger than hands, only the shapes in contact with hands were considered. We found that consistent with previous literature, sphere and cylinder are common, and we also found a number of rectangular boxes. While other primitive shapes can represent some objects, 
we decided to focus on spheres, cylinders, and boxes for our design. We use PE sheets for the material of our airbags. After we have cut and folded the sheets, we use a heat sealer machine to manually seal the sheets one edge at a time. For the sphere, we fold the sheets multiple times to allow the structure to evenly fold it and heat sealed at each end. For the cylinder, we fold each end inward and seal both sides. We keep the height at about the size of the palm for simulating a long cylindrical object in grasp. For the rectangular box, we carefully fold the sheets so the airbags can have a tendency to fold inward for minimizing the flattened area. To mount multiple props on the palm, we stack airbags of different shapes and sizes. When either of the airbags is needed, we inflate it and deflate the other one. The airbags are stacked in an order according to the size of the flattened airbags. This is to mitigate the effect of deflated airbags overhanging. All props are designed to be attached right on the palm in order to support grasping small objects only with the thumb and the fingers, props need to be lifted off the palm. We add in an additional airbag to lift the prop in parallel. For some grasp, such as holding a pen, we add a triangle-shaped airbag to lift and tilt the prop. We use lip motion mounted in front of the VR headset for sensing fingers when the props are flattened. When the props are inflated, we found that the air pressure sensors will be affected by small air leakage. Thus, we use on-prop force sensors to detect finger events. Other object properties, such as changes of stiffness, can be emulated through deflating and inflating according to the force of finger press. Position like heartbeats can be emulated through a series of sudden inflation. Despite the inflation time needed, we develop two types of grasping techniques to incorporate into VR seamlessly. For natural grasp, we detect if the user's hand is approaching the object. The according airbag will be inflated in advance, allowing the user to grasp the fully inflated prop in place. In the movie Star Wars, Jedi summon a distant lightsaber using the force. Similarly, we design magic grasp to allow users to pick up a distant object by aiming at it with hand open gesture. After one second, the object will fly to the user's hand visually. In the meantime, the prop on the palm is being inflated. We created two fantasy VR applications to demonstrate the usage of poop up. We adopt the fictional sports game Quidditch from Harry Potter and create a simplified one. When the user's hand approaches a ball, the big spherical prop will be inflated in advance to allow picking up the ball in place. After the player throws the ball at the hoop, the prop will be deflated. The player can also catch the golden snitch flying in the sky, and a small spherical prop will be inflated. So this game demonstrates stacking of two sizes of spherical props for representing the big balls and the snitch. Another application is a 3D painting experience. The user can pick up the distance brush using magic grasp and the cylindrical prop on the palm will be inflated. The user squeezes the brush to generate strokes, sensed with a full sensor. The brush can be replaced with an eraser also changed by aiming at it with hand open. We use a box prop with a parallel extension to simulate the real world grasp of a small eraser. So this application demonstrates stacking of two shapes on the palm representing a painting brush and an eraser. We conducted two user studies to understand poop up. According to previous research findings, when in conflict, visual sensation often dominates over haptic sensation when the user is perceiving shapes and sizes. We are curious about whether poop up can, could leverage this effect so that a prop with a fixed size could represent multiple virtual objects of similar sizes. We choose three sizes for each primitive shapes. 
and 12 people participated in a study of visual size acceptance range. We used the one up, one down adaptive staircase method to ascertain the lower and upper bound of the visual size for each physical prop. Participants answered yes or no on whether the visual size matches the physical one. So here are the results for the nine selected props. We found that for the most of the boundaries are overlapping. That is, the upper bounds of the smaller props are mostly higher than the lower bounds of the larger props. This indicates that the acceptance range together encompasses a complete spectrum. Therefore, to support shape feedback for multiple objects with similar sizes, we don't need to mount many additional props on the palm. We also found that while the average lower bound is about the same physical size, the average upper bounds are 36.2% larger than the physical size. Based on an informal investigation, this may result from that we mounted the prop a little closer to the fingers for the ease of manipulation. The participants were slightly constrained to bend their fingers, thus feeling that the props were larger. More future work is needed to understand the effect. We conducted study two to see if poop up increases the level of enjoyment and object realism in actual VR experiences compared to other interfaces. We compared it with the HTC Vive controller and the freehand manipulation tracked by leap motion. Twelve participants experienced the two demo applications, Quidditch sports training and magic brush painting, using the three interfaces. The order of the three interfaces is counterbalanced between participants. The participants rated the enjoyment and object realism using a continuous seven-point Likert scale. We also conducted interviews to collect qualitative feedback. Here are the brief results of the two applications. For the Quidditch ball throwing application, participants reported a significantly higher degree of enjoyment and object realism compared to the controller and freehand. For magic brush painting application, we found no significant difference in enjoyment using the three interfaces. However, for object realism, participants rated poop up and the controller both significantly higher than freehand. Some participants feel that the brush using poop up is too soft. On the contrary, some participants think that the softness of the poop up quite matches the eraser. Overall, participants offer positive feedback on using poop up. There are several limitations on current implementation. First, since poop up is mounted on the palm, it inevitably causes the slice pressure, which is not desired when holding a pen prop. Though most participants in our study did not notice the extended airbag, possibly due to the palm strap mitigating the feeling, more user studies are required to understand its effect. We found that participants sometimes grasp the portion of the prop which was not designed for grasping, such as the lid of a slender prop. More research is needed to understand to what extent a shape proxy emulates an object so that realism holds throughout manipulation. Due to portability and power consumption considerations, only small pair palms are adopted for our prototype. However, we can compensate for the inflation and deflation with visual effects. Some participants feel poop up is too soft for some rigid virtual objects. Researchers have Propose changing stiffness using a pneumatic jamming technique. Combining such one could be an interesting solution. Poop-up is presented with primitive shapes in this paper. We found researchers use computational design methods for complex inflatable structures. Folding methods for such shapes can be explored further. So to conclude, we present a concept and prototype of poop-up for VR. Several shape structures, along with stacking and extension techniques, have been designed. We conducted user studies to understand the visual size acceptance range of Poopop and evaluated this interface. Through our preliminary study, we believe that Poopop is a simple yet effective way to convey haptic shapes in VR. Thank you, and please check out our demo number 17 in this evening and you'll be right outside of the back door of this room. And one more thing, uh, I just got my master's degree from National Taiwan University, and I'm looking for my PhD. Thank you.
Thank you so much for the very cool talk, and that's an easy hire. I mean, um, so we have time for a couple of questions. There's one microphone over there. There's one microphone in the back. Please state your step to the microphone, state uh, your name and affiliations. And until people, there is one question. Yes. Hi, John Luca, University of Sussex. Thanks for the amazing presentation. Thank you. I have a question on the time in your magic grasp. Yeah. So before, uh, in the demo that you showed us, the object arrives visually to the end before it starts inflating. How much time it passes? Uh, we've been sure the time that for uh, the small props in our implementation, it takes about 0 0.9 seconds to fully inflate the prop. And for a larger one, it takes about two seconds to fully inflate them. So uh, it's like we, we need to adjust the, the flying speed for uh, small or the large props to make the visual and the haptic sensation coherent. Thank you. That was my comment. Thank you. All right. Other questions? Okay. One. Is this? Okay. No, Hi. Hi. Santiago from Intel Corporation. Um, you mentioned a broad grasp and a precision grasp. Yes. And the broad grasp is something that the object moves at the same time as to your overall hand, which the leap motion is really good at. In a precision graph, which is just fingerprints, for example, on a pen, do you compensate for the very precise movements of your fingers on the object or like is there any because the leap motion won't be very good at catching tiny little uh, differences yeah uh, in our implementation we use leap motion to basically track when the prop is flattened but when the prop is inflated then the in leap motion is not good at tracking the fine finger manipulation so we use this force force uh, sensor on the prop to sense if the user actually touched the, the prop. But uh, I would think that in the future, maybe if our prop is covered full of uh, force sensor, then it can provide more accurate uh, grasping gesture and uh, the posture to, uh, f for, f for more like, uh, more to detect more gesture type on grasping the prop. Okay. Thank you. Last question. Um, hi, I'm Jackie Young from Stanford University. Um, I'm curious, um, so you mentioned that when the prop is not inflated, you are using leap motion. Um, when the prop is inflated, you use some force sensor to detect whether the user is grasping. Yes. So I wonder what is the transition between, like, so like when you grasp, it's, it's not an instant motion, like your finger moves. So do you track the finger movement during um, the transition? During the, so we, yeah. we, uh, we only change to the full sensor once the Prop is fully inflated, so the, the force sensor's value could be. Uh, so is that like accurate. a binary value, like whether you are holding or not, or you you can track like how much you are closing on the object? Um, now I think the leap motion is not accurate enough to track if you are closing to the the prop. Right. But when the prop is fully inflated, then the prop itself can sense the, the no, gesture. No, I'm saying whether, so when the prop is inflated, yes. grasp, grasp, grasp or not grasp is a transition. Like your hand is like completely open when it's yes. open, right? And when you're grasping on an gra uh, on a, on a object, like there, there is a transition between here. I'm just curious, what is the transition being done over here? Because um, mm -hmm. I have a separate research which investigated this kind of effect, and I'm curious, like, um, um, w like what kind of um, transition are you are making for the people, like visual transition you're displaying while you are grasping on the object? Uh, you, you mean like the object is flying to your hand and... No, no, no. So maybe, like, maybe okay. this well, looks well, like a longer discussion, which is, okay. is awesome. Maybe let's take this, you take it offline. Okay. Let's right. give the speaker another hand for this.